Are you curious about how to navigate the new quest table in Sea of Thieves Season 11? Wondering if there's any hidden secrets you should know about? Well, you're in luck because this video is tailored just for you. Hey there, I'm Hippo TC, and welcome back to another Sea of Thieves guide video. If you enjoy this content, be sure to hit that like button, drop a comment down below, and smash the subscribe button. You can also catch me streaming live on Twitch every week. Check out my schedule in the description below. Now let's dive into the video. In Season 11, Rare has overhauled the voyaging and questing system, introducing the quest table as a centralized hub on your ship. Breaking down the quest table, we have Discover, Voyages, Tall Tale, and Liked Voyages. This area serves to inform you about newly unlocked content and upcoming events in the game. It's a handy space for players to track their progress and learn about any additional actions they might need to take things like promotions or newly available voyages. This will serve as a great way for players to stay informed about all of the things in Sea of Thieves. The most significant changes come in this section. You no longer need to purchase individual voyages from trading companies at outposts. Instead, you can set sail at any time and choose from a variety of voyages, including Gold Hoarders, Order of Souls, Merchant Alliance, Athena, and even Special Voyages. However, at this time, both Hunter's Call and Reaper's Bones currently lack voyages, but they do provide explanations for new players about what these factions are all about. Now let's dive into how voyages work. Once you select a trading company, you've presented with a unique voyage option. Gold hoarders focus on riddles, treasure vaults, and buried treasure, order of souls on bounties and ghost ships, merchant alliance on merchant contracts, cargo runs and lost shipments, and Athena on legends of the veil, voyage of legends, and legendary searches. You can also have a medley, which is just a bunch of various voyages for the trading company, and special voyages can also be found here where all unique voyages will be stored and you can even start up random voyages or a tall tale. A game changing feature is the dive to location mechanic, allowing you to quickly reach the starting point of your voyage. For example, if you want to do Devil's Roar voyages instead of sailing all the way over there, which could take up to five to 10 minutes, you can vote for the voyage, select dive to location, sail to open water, dive and emerge in the Devil's Roar at the beginning island. This feature significantly speeds up gameplay and enhances the overall experience. A crucial note on diving. If you choose to dive with treasure on your ship, you will lose it. You take no loot with you, only supplies, storage crates, and that rowboat remain on your ship. So you will not be able to use this mechanic to dive away from any threats you may encounter. Also, every dive, whether for a voyage, a raid voyage, or a tall tale, loads you into a new server, preventing any advantage gain on your current server. So don't think you can use it to catch that running reaper. I do want to mention that they have improved all emissary quests and made them worth doing again, but I will talk about that more in my emissary guide. Raid voyages. These might be a bit confusing, so let's break it down. Each trading company now offers raid voyages, allowing you to raid a sea fort, sunken shrine, treasury, Ashwins, a regular skeleton fort, a skeleton fleet, or a ghost fleet. These special voyages are unlocked the further you progress in these trading companies with the best raid voyages coming in the higher levels. Sailing to location is not an option for raid voyages. The only choice is to dive to location. During a raid voyage, you dive to the selected encounter and rise up to an uncontested event. The loot table changes to specific loot geared towards your chosen trading company. For instance, as a gold hoarder, diving to a skeleton fleet, the loot becomes gold hoarder specific and defeating the captain grants a trinket worth 15k gold hoarder value. Although there's less overall loot, everything you acquire is specific to your trading company, resulting in more valuable goods and reputation as this new loot comes in as a higher value per item. Raiding a sea fort, sunken shrine, or treasury won't yield any of those new high tier trinkets. However, Ashen Winds provides a bronze version worth 5k, the skeleton fort offers a silver version worth 10k, and both the skeleton fleet and the ghost fleet reward the gold trinket worth 15k each. This means every treasure is now worth fighting for and stealing. The raid voyages brilliantly make all world events valuable not just the Fort of the Damned or the Fort of Fortunes. Lastly, on the Voyages tab, when you find a voyage you enjoy, make sure to, quote, like it. 
so you can easily access it later at the liked voyages from the main menu on the quest table, saving you time. Tall Tales. The final significant change involves Tall Tales. This menu breaks down each Tall Tales story, including the Shores of Gold, A Pirate's Life, Legend of the Monkey Island, and the Ashen Age. Similar to the voyages, you can start a Tall Tale and decide to sail or die to the location making it easier than ever to begin your adventures. You can also access any save checkpoints for a faster start. However, a hidden feature is the ability to quickly navigate the seas using tall tail dives. If you want to go to Plunder Outpost, vote down the Cursed Rogue, or for Ancient Spire, vote down the Legendary Storyteller. This feature is particularly beneficial for Reaper 5's hunting down emissaries, allowing you to hop to a new server while retaining your level 5 flag. Another way to think about it is if you reach level 5 in your emissary and you want to do your emissary voyages in the Devil's Roar, you can easily fast travel to Morrow's Peak Outpost by voting down the Heart of Fire. This will take you right to Morrow's Peak in the Devil's Roar, allowing you to do those new emissary quests that are specific in the Devil's Roar. In conclusion, these changes significantly speed up the gameplay loop, enhancing the experience of exploring islands, doing voyages, and engaging in world events. And if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Comment below what you're most excited for, and don't forget to subscribe for more in-depth guides on emissaries, emergent encounters, and other new features for Sea of Thieves. Thanks again, and I'll catch you out in the seas.